Bonjour, bonjour les amis. Bienvenue à Paris, welcome to Paris. I went on a little stroll this morning and I thought you might enjoy following me to my next destination. We are not in a touristy area. The weather is milder than it was earlier this week because the rain arrived last night. So it's nice. We're not cold. Of course, la grisaille parisienne is still here, the gray skies, you can see, but the sun is trying ever so courageously to peek through. I am on my way to uh, a couple of appointments and so I thought I would take you along with me. We are walking in the 14th arrondissement and ahead of us is a beautiful building that uh, dates back to the 1930s actually. I know it's very early for many of you in many parts of the world, <laughs> but hopefully some people will join live and then the rest of you can watch the replay later. If you are in Australia or New Zealand, you might be able to catch this. So this building I was telling you about is actually part of the local city hall, but it is uh, a part that was added in the early 1930s and so the style is very much art deco. I'm going to stand in front of it so you can see that red brick I went inside, they let me take a peek, which was nice of them. Do you see these on the facade? And you have those geometric, very geometric lines, the Art Deco period. I'm following a little park here that we're going to step into in a second. In the distance is another brick building and uh, it says Crèche. Crèche is a uh, daycare. On the gates of the park here is a photo exhibit dedicated to local uh, boulanger, uh, craftsmen, artisan boulanger. Merci, madame, c'est gentil. Merci beaucoup. A lady just went around so she wouldn't be in the way. That's nice. Uh, so yeah, dedicated to local uh, boulanger. We are in the 14e arrondissement, 14th arrondissement. So you see the top says Portrait de Boulanger 14e. And it's really uh, comforting actually because you see that uh, you have some young boulanger and then you have some, and they're all very different, but they love their trade. And so this exhibit features a lot of the local boulangers who make the delicious baguettes, croissants, viennoiseries that locals and visitors enjoy in this part of Paris. So the exhibit continues all along the park here. I didn't lie, the sun is really trying to peek through as you can see. And um, here's another beautiful building here. This is la mairie du 14e arrondissement, the city hall of the 14th arrondissement. You can see the facade is quite imposing. It's in very good shape. Pierre de Taille, that uh, limestone that is so prevalent in Paris on many buildings on the facades. Now, just a little bit of uh, historic context here. Uh, back in the day, before the mid 19th century, we would have been in a village outside Paris and that village was known as Montrouge. And then as you probably remember, back in the day, a couple of years ago, I took you around a lot of the former villages of Paris. You can find those replays on the France with Vero YouTube channel. A lot of these villages were eventually incorporated into Paris by Napoleon III during a time period known as the uh, Second Empire and they became arrondissements of Paris and this was originally the city hall of Montrouge and now it is the city hall of the 14th. The room on the first floor there that you see is rumored to be absolutely beautiful. This is where they celebrate weddings and I, I wish I could take a peek but uh, I probably won't have time today. 
Let's uh, step inside uh, Le Square, uh, Ferdinand Bruno. You can see the date, 1862. So this is one of many public gardens and green spaces that the city of Paris developed during the Second Empire. Not just the big ones like uh, the Bois de Vincennes, east of Paris, or the uh, Bois de Boulogne, west of Paris, but also smaller parks and gardens so that Parisians could enjoy uh, their city. And I wanted to step through here so you could see signs of spring. We have waited a long time to see this. Bonjour, friends. I see you joining some of you from Australia. I see someone from Seattle. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. As you know, I'm spending a few days in Paris, working, preparing for my upcoming Rick Steve tours, meeting with friends. And I continue to share what I see here on France with Vero on Facebook, on YouTube. This is a nice view here of the city hall we just saw up close and personal. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Here is the uh, annex of the city hall where we started the Art Deco style. And here is a um, tribute to the Jewish children who were sent to concentration camps, Nazi concentration camps, uh, in uh, during World War II, you have um, it's actually very moving because there is a list with their names and also uh, their ages, and you can see some of them were as young as three months old. So typically, you'll see those on French public schools or Parisian public schools, but uh, here is one in the park. Palm trees, <laughs> they almost look a little bit out of place here. It's been so cold. And la la, look at that, signs of spring, blossoms. Isn't that pretty? Get a little closer. Yay. We've all waited to see this, haven't we? All right, so this won't be very long, but I just want to take you along until I get back to uh, the place where I'm headed for an appointment. I'm visiting uh, restaurants and uh, hotels that I will be working with when I lead Rick Steve's tour starting in April. So it's nice to uh, go back and see them and say hello. And so that's what I've been doing this week, among other things here. Parisian facades. Hear bells in the distance? Hope you can hear them. Maybe I'll go this way. The 14th arrondissement is on the left bank of Paris. For those of you who are not familiar with it, it's not a very touristy place. It remains quite authentic, though there are many hotels and apartment rentals here. It's one of my favorite places on the left bank. I'm more of a right bank girl. I've always been through my Parisian years, but the 14th arrondissement is one of my favorites here, whenever I cross the river. What I like in the 14th is that you do have some very impressive buildings, of course, but you also have old Paris that survives. And all of these buildings that were fairly humble buildings, and some of them have been here for a while, at least the 19th century, and you do see that in the side street, so it still feels very authentic. Independent shops, Convenient shopping like this boucherie, butcher shop. Now, on the right hand side, you might think, whoa, this is a lot of, uh, a lot of trash. Well, that's because there's a strike going on. You uh, heard me talk about it on Instagram yesterday on March 7th, if you watch this much, much later. And so uh, many people are on strike, including trash collectors. So there's a lot of trash piling up along Paris streets right now. We're just hoping it won't last very, very long. People are protesting the new, or the proposed, I should say, reform of the retirement system. A very complex bill that's not passed yet. But everybody's up in arms, protesting, etc. If you want to follow later on the map, I'm walking along Rue Boulard in the 14th arrondissement. 
Here is an older building here that I really like. See, typically in more humble neighborhoods, you would have had lower, fewer floors. And then when neighborhoods started getting much more affluent or catering to a more affluent crowd, the buildings would get much higher. If I turn back here, this is a beautiful building that's being restored. Look at the mix of brick and stone. It's very pretty. We are along Charles, uh, Rue Charles d'Ivry. And here is a tribute to a local celebrity. You see her right here. Her name was Agnès Varda. She was a uh, famous movie director. She lived uh, in this neighborhood for decades until her death practically. And this is a, uh, a very nice fresco that's dedicated to some of her most famous documentaries and movies, including one known as La Rue Daguerre. Daguerre, I think the title is right here. I'll show it to you. Dedicated to that market street that's in the area. It's right here. Daguerreotype. That was the name of the documentary. So, bonjour Agnès, Agnès Varda. And the little square we just left is actually dedicated to her uh, husband, Jacques Demy, who was a uh, movie director as well. I'm walking along Rue Boulard in the 14th arrondissement. Hope the cell signal holds up. I haven't really tested this, but sometimes impromptu is best. You know, I like that. I'll upload this later to uh, the France with Vera YouTube channel, of course. Now, in these neighborhoods, you see a lot of uh, private uh, villas. They're called villas, and villas are typically behind gates. They are private, and they are very nice buildings with inner courtyards. And there are quite a few in the 14th arrondissement. Really, the architecture here is a mix, a mix of very humble buildings, like the type you would have seen here in the 19th century, probably, and before the mid-19th century, and the old village of Montrouge, and then more more affluent buildings, more elegant buildings that came later. Here's a nice view on the street, La Rue Liancourt. See the mix of facades? You have the older ones here that are quite low, and then you go to more Haussmannian type buildings in the back here, so the type that were added during the Second Empire in the second half of the 19th century. The garage Boulard. I like the Art Deco uh, style of the building. It's been here for a while. Thank you for joining me today. It's, lo it's fun to have people with me for an impromptu tour. And I know many of you prefer to do it live, but since it's impromptu by definition, I can't really warn you in advance. <laughs> Here's a school, and outside French schools, you have a French flag, a European flag, and the French Republic motto, which is Liberté, Égalité, Fraternité. It's common around here. It's getting close to lunchtime, that's why you see people picking up kids. And I think what I'll do, oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you're enjoying this tour. What I'll do is take a right here in the one of the most famous streets in this neighborhood called La Rue Daguerre, the one, in fact, where director Agnès Varda lived. I did a tour here during the lockdowns in 2021. You can find that on the uh, Friends with Vero YouTube channel. It was a rainy day. So today it rained, but it's kind of nicer now. <laughs> so this is the first half of the street. And I'm going to uh, go in this direction so I can connect with the big boulevard that will take me back where I'm headed. So you'll see part of the Rue Daguerre. And La Rue Daguerre, you may remember a few days ago, I was on another popular market street known as La Rue Montorgueil by Les Halles in Paris. La Rue Daguerre is an old street, but like R Rue Montorgueil and Rue Claire in the 7th, it's changing fast with signs of, pardon madame, with signs of gentrification. We are here at a lovely place, Au Merveilleux de Fred. 
This is these are pastries uh, that are made all over France now, but originated in uh, in northern France. Les merveilleux de Fred. If you like meringue, if you like cream, these are the large size ones. But you can see they come in very I wouldn't say bite size because it would take a couple bites to eat this. But they are now in many different neighborhoods in Paris and they're quite delicious. And you see how this box has different flavors. So if you like meringue, if you like cream, something decadent, you would definitely like uh, <laughs> Au Merveilleux de Fred. So La Rue de la Guerre, old, old market street. And the difference between a market, an outdoor market in Paris and a market street is that Many neighborhoods have outdoor markets that are typically open two days a week. But a market street is really open throughout the week. So if you move to a neighborhood that has a market street, a real one like La Rue Daguerre, or if you rent an apartment nearby for uh, a vacation, you're in business, you know, because you will still find a lot of independent stores. And of course, all of them typically revolve around food, or most of them do. The old fashioned types, the newer types like we just saw with Au Merveilleux de Fred. But something that's really fun to do is if you go to this street, La Rue Daguerre in the 14th, and then go, go to Rue Montorgueil, Palais Halles in the first or second arrondissement, or go to La Rue Claire in the seventh, you won't see, you'll see, you'll have your little droguerie, uh, you know, your little drugstore where they sell everything, that's an old one. But then you'll see a lot of the chains that you find everywhere now, like A La Mer de Famille, which is one of the oldest, um, pardon madame, which is one of the oldest uh, chocolate shops uh, in Paris. And recently, A La Mer de Famille, a few years ago, signed an agreement with Storer, Storer, the most famous pastry shop, one of the most famous oldest pastry shops in Paris, based in La Rue Montorgueil. So you can see now that they have also lovely pastries with that blue logo, which is Storer, as well as the chocolates and the candy confections they sell traditionally. You have a supermarket, of course. There's always one, Carrefour, Franprix, convenience store. See those old buildings? They've been here for a while. I'm going to try not to film the trash because I already mentioned that. There's no point. Construction going on, I can hear it. Here is a store in the green awning specializing in the Perigord, the Dordogne, the Perigord in southwestern France, duck country. A lot of their specialties include duck, foie gras. This is all foie gras, goose liver, duck liver. The boulanger pâtissier is closed for now. Working hard, that's what you hear. Here's a chain, a French chain of ice cream. Um, they are everywhere now in Paris and in the rest of France. I think they're destroying La Rue de Guerre. <laughs> your brasserie, your local cafe where uh, locals meet, on terrace or inside. This one sells fresh pasta. La Maison de la Pâte. See the mix of old buildings and then more elegant buildings. So there's a little bit of everything here along La Rue Daguerre. You have your Greek traiteur. The traiteur is the deli. He cooks for you, so he'll prepare salads or entrees for you. Le Chocolat Alain Ducasse, the famous chef. He is also along Rue Claire. He is also along popular market streets. Piles of trash. <laughs> And this sign, this harks back to the day when a lot of uh, butcher shops in France actually sold horse meat. They're few and far between now, and they've been switched to, they're converted to regular uh, boucherie, rotisserie. They have the roasted chicken. Too bad you can't smell it. It smells wonderful right now. And you have the potatoes in the bottom right here that will cook in the, uh, in the drip, is the juice dripping from the chicken, you see? So that's going to be lovely. Bonjour, Catherine. Good to see you. Glad you caught me live, too. Pharmacy. Need to have a pharmacy. If you live in France, there are almost as many pharmacies as there are cafes. The French love their pharmacies and pharmacists. 
Here's a pretty building along Rue Daguerre. I'm going to try and step back so you can see. Elegant architecture. You see the gorgeous uh, balconies. We call this ferronnerie, whatever's made of metal out there. You see the curve. And at the very top, les chambres de bonne, the chamber's maids, where servants used to live, but now it's uh, whoever can't afford a regular apartment. Some of them can be quite nice, actually, once they've been updated. Nice view along this little street here. And on the right-hand side is La Meringue, another store you will see along other market streets, like uh, La Rue de Lévy in the 17th, where I used to live, specializing in beautiful meringues, meringue desserts. If you like your meringue, whoops, I triggered the door. Now I can film. <laughs> there we go. Bonjour. Uh, Don't faire marais. So you have your fishmonger. And this store has been here for a really long time. They have another one in Paris, I believe. And they sell, they're also traiteurs. So they sell salads and things they have prepared with seafood. Look at the mussels. Look at the paella. And the choucroute de la mer, sauerkraut of the sea. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour. Excusez-moi, je filme. C'est gentil, merci. Bonne journée, madame. Look at this beautiful shellfish. Always be polite when you film. Ask first if you can. And if you can't, <laughs> greet them at least. It goes well. Au Bon Jardinier, this chain of um, grocery stores of produce sellers is everywhere. There are along Rue Claire as well. So this trend is happening all over Paris and major cities in the world where a lot of the independent stores are now replaced by chains. You're familiar with that, of course. And in Paris, it's very noticeable. Vacrou et Fils, very well-known fishmonger on, along the street. I'll turn around so you can see it. I passed another one, Androué, that's well-known. And you have the uh, Cave Perret, the wine merchant. They've been here for a long time as well with ties to one of the other merchants along the street that I told in my previous tour that I filmed here in 2021, I think. Let's turn around so you can see. Here is Vacro et Fils, the cheese shop. And this is a nice view of the Rue Daguerre, one of the lesser known um, market streets in Paris for visitors, but I think still one of the most authentic ones. Here is a charcuterie. This one has been redone recently. I remember it was under construction months ago. And of course, you have your terrace, your cafe, your restaurants. As you connect with the big boulevard, the one that will take you outside Paris, going south in this direction. Le Café Daguerre, aptly named. I love this building. It's a very nice building. I have a saxophone on the left. Bonjour, monsieur. I have a saxophone on the left, and I have the police sirens on the right. Stereo sound. Monoprix. You need to have a Monoprix. You know that chain. They're everywhere in Paris. They're also all over. France, and this is essential to Parisian life because you find everything. It's like a target on steroid, steroids if you live in the United States. Not all monoprix are created equal. Some are better than others. Some are bigger than others. Nice bakery here, Le Pain au Naturel. Their facade is protected, I'm guessing. You see those uh, panels here. You see many boulangeries in Paris where they're protected. They cannot touch them because they've been here for a long time. And this one has a lot of lovely brioche. So if you love brioche, you might want to check this one out. A lot of them are bio, which is biologic or organic. They have a very affordable formule petit déjeuner. So for breakfast, for two euro fifty, you can get a café allongé, which is more like an American coffee or an espresso plus a croissant 
croissant or chocolatine. Now, these are good people. They know that chocolate croissant is not pain au chocolat, but chocolatine. So I'm guessing the owner is from the southwest, as I am. <laughs> this is a bit of a joke, a private joke, for those of you who know about this little this fight in France between those who call chocolate croissant pain au chocolat and those who call it chocolatine. And this is a nice place where I used to stay in a hotel across the street and the Café du Rendez-vous is a really nice place. They're very friendly. You can come throughout the day and at night they stay open pretty late and they're very, very nice. The food's decent. So this is always a good place to stop. If you're in need of a drink or something to eat. Ooh, green light. Excellent. Let's do this. So a long time ago, there was a wall around Paris, one of many walls, but this wall was specifically built for taxation purposes. And uh, at major entry points around Paris, you had gates, barrières they were called, and one was standing right here in this area. And in fact, this building and that building were part of that gate. La barrière de l'enfer was named after hell. <laughs> Today, these two buildings have been turned into two very popular museums. The one here is where you enter the famous Paris catacombs, miles and miles of tunnels where the bones picked up in many cemeteries were brought starting in the late 18th century. And the one here is my favorite because it's called the Musée de la Libération de Paris, Musée du Général Leclerc, Musée Jean Moulin. So this one is dedicated to the efforts of the French resistance during World War II in the occupation. And the great thing about it is that it is free. You'll just pay for the special exhibits. I see they have one going on now. I might want to check that out later. But this is a free museum, uh, closed on Monday, but open all the other days, including Sunday, including Sunday. So you have two interesting places to check out when you come here. As you reach this very busy square where I'm going to wrap up, known as La Place d'Enfer Rochereau, named after an officer who distinguished himself with a lot of bravery during the Franco-Prussian War in the early 1870s. There was a city named Belfort in northeastern France that fought long and hard against the Prussians and only surrendered after France did, after the armistice, Belfort. And so this lion commemorates that event. It was uh, designed by a sculptor you know very well, Bartholdi, who also created or designed or sculpted the famous Statue of Liberty. And this takes you, of course, to other sections of the 14th arrondissement, as well as the 6th arrondissement, closer to Saint-Germain-des-Prés and so forth, the Luxembourg Gardens. You can go to a lot of places here. So to get a little bit of peace and quiet, I think I'll just step in here to say, so I can say a quick little hello to you, as I always do. There we go. Voilà. Bonjour, les amis. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, impromptu stroll before I head out to my next appointment in the 14th arrondissement. It had been a while since I just uh, walked live here. So hopefully you enjoyed this and I hope the stream quality will be okay and I can upload it to the YouTube channel. So like always, thank you for joining me in Paris this time as I travel around France and uh, I will pop up again soon. Thank you, thank you for being here. I'll switch back so you can see Voila, so you can see this little square with the metropolitan entrance, Place d'Enfer Rochereau, we just passed. Voila, it was just a little cuckoo, a little hello from the lovely 14th arrondissement. Thank you for joining me today. If you'd like to support France with Vero, that information will be in this video notes. I will upload it in a few minutes. Merci beaucoup. A bientôt.